Hi everyone! Today we're going to take a look at Camtasia 2023, see what's new, and help you decide whether or not it's worth it for you to upgrade. While I was checking out Camtasia 2023, I noticed that some of my favorite assets from 2022 were not in the new library. So at the end of the video, I'm also going to show you how to export your library, then import it back into 2023 so that you can have the best of both worlds if you decide that upgrading is worth it for you. The first thing I will show you is the new corner pin mode. Notice that on the timeline, I have a stock asset that shows a woman in front of a computer which has a green screen. With the corner pin mode, I can make my footage or even a still frame fit into the computer screen. To make this work, the stock footage I am using needs to be on the bottom track. On the second track, I will put the footage that should go into the green screen space. Now, it doesn't have to be a green screen. It's just easier for me to see it that way. Then I'm going to select the corner pin icon at the top of the screen. A red line will appear around the footage and I can drag the corners to fit into the computer monitor on the track below. Once I get it exactly in the place that I want it and then I play back what I've done, it looks like the lady in the stock footage is editing my video. The ability to customize assets is really the theme for Camtasia 2023. Let's start by looking at the cursors. In Camtasia 2022, they introduced the option to scale up the cursor captured in your video footage. So if you look to the properties pane on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that I am greatly increasing the scale of my mouse and it doesn't get all pixelated. So that lets you really bring attention to something on the screen. This year, Camtasia has taken it to the next step. I wanna draw your attention to the left-hand navigation menu and I'm going to select cursor effects. Here you're gonna see two new choices, cursor color and cursor shadow. As you can see, my cursor is the standard boring white. If I drop the cursor color effect on the timeline, it will become yellow. Now, if we go to the properties on the left side, you will see a drop down, and I can select another color or use the color picker. This is a great way to draw attention to the cursor and use your branding or style guide. I'm gonna change the cursor back to yellow, and then I'm gonna go back to the right hand side and grab this cursor shadow. Then when I drag and drop that onto the canvas, you can see there's a shadow beneath the yellow cursor, which just gives you a little bit of dimension and drags people's attention to your cursor on the screen. As I move the playhead over the timeline, you can see that the yellow and the shadow picks up for every single cursor point that Camtasia has captured. In the properties pane back on the right hand side, you can see there's these little toggle buttons next to each effect that I added and you can toggle them on and off to double check what it looks like and maybe make some changes such as the offset for the shadow. Now I'm going to get rid of both of the effects so that we can look at some different options to customize our cursor. In the properties pane, you will see the icon for my cursor. And if I click on the drop down next to it, you will be able to find additional options. Right now we have it set to just use the current cursor, whatever was captured in the video. But if I click on the drop down next to recorded cursors, I have this option to choose custom cursors. So what I did is I created a custom cursor in Canva and I just imported it using the plus button into Camtasia. Now you will see that there's this little bubble with my picture and my name on it. The custom cursor can be any image you like. The reason I chose this one is I do a lot of software tutorials where I test both sides of a process. You hear my voice the whole time, so it can be hard for some people to realize that I've switched roles. A custom cursor with a picture lets me tell a visual story of the change as well. I will click the drop down again, and this time I'm going to select neon. Camtasia has added a whole bunch of neon cursors that can be used to add a bit of personality. If you scroll through the list, you'll see things like this arrow or the Christmas tree icon. There's pencils. There's even a unicorn in here somewhere. And they all are just really fun neon cursors that you can use. Now, unfortunately, where I work, they really wouldn't be considered appropriate. So I don't see myself using them a lot, but they were fun to play with. Now that we're done playing with those, another feature that I use a lot is the opacity slider. I tend to wiggle around with my mouse a little bit too much so I can turn down the opacity of the mouse. 
And then I'm going to draw your attention to the library on the left hand side of the screen. And we have these cursor animations that you can go through and this can help you draw attention to a specific thing. So for example, I'm going to use this hand raise cursor and position it over the navigation bar at the top. As I run the timeline over it, it the hand is pointing to the thing I want you to click. This is where we get back to the theme of customization. Camtasia 2022 said they added over a thousand new assets and they did, but they were really recolors of the same stuff. You had a yellow hand, a blue hand, etc. I hope you like those choices because that's all you had. This time they have fewer items in the library to dig through because each one can be customized. In my opinion, this is really the best part of the upgrade. So I encourage you to look through all these cursor clicks and find ones that you like and then change them to the color or the branding that you like. So just to illustrate one more thing, there were emphasis effects in Camtasia 2022, but they were recolors of the same click gestures. And the only one that was customizable was click gesture five. So I use that one all the time. So I wasn't stuck with a specific color. Now I have a wider range of things that I can do because they all can be changed. Now we're going to leave the cursors behind and go into the dynamic backgrounds. The thing that is different here is these are no longer video files that are stuck at a specific length. If I wanted a background behind a long piece of video, I used to have to copy and paste it onto my timeline multiple times. These new backgrounds can be adjusted to be on the timeline as long as you like, and it provides a seamless loop. One of my favorites thus far is the half screen fill. I often find myself talking about steps that people need to know before they can start using an app. Looking at a still screen is boring. The half fill provides not only some motion to the screen, but I can also put my bullet points over it to make the whole thing more interesting than a still screen. Okay, for this next one, neon seems to be the second theme for Camtasia 2023. They have a lot of titles this year, just like they did last year, but there's a real neon color palette. Now, I particularly like this big type four because as I put it on the screen and resize it to fit over, I can then drag my playhead over it and it becomes transparent as the words come in to add a little bit of visual interest. However, I might have to tone down some of the neon colors. The next thing that I wanna show you is visual effects. Now, the first time I went through this, I completely missed it. We've had the visual effects tab. The only thing I really noticed that was different was background rem removal. I completely missed the fact that there's a second tab called filters. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go to the intro for this video and any of the filters that are under this tab, you can apply to the footage. So for example, this black and white. Now that the filter is on the timeline, I can click the drop down and just scroll through all the different filters until I find one that I think goes well with the color aesthetic I'm trying to go for. Now, a lot of these are a little bit crazy, but I really like piercing white. It's not exactly right, but if I take the intensity slider and move it down just a little bit, then I can adjust that color filter and just touch up my footage a little bit. Now, I have to be fully honest here and say I'm not the greatest with color LUT and knowing what looks good and what doesn't. So I personally just eyeball it and say, I think that looks good. Now, the goal of this video isn't to go over every tiny little change, just to give you a sample of them. At this point in time, you might know whether or not you want to upgrade to Camtasia 2023 or stay in Camtasia 2022 or whatever version you have. Let's pretend you want to upgrade. If you want any of your library items from Camtasia 2022 or prior, you need to export those and then re-import them into this library before you delete the old one off of your computer. At click the drop down next to the library, select manage library and select export library. This will bring up the dialog box where you can choose where to save yours. This will generate a library package zip file and just save that anywhere that makes sense for you. I'm just gonna drop it in my Camtasia documents file. In your Camtasia 2023 library, go back to the library dropdown, select manage library and select import zipped library. Then I would navigate to where my file is and simply click on open. 
Now, don't forget, if you have any custom libraries you created like I did, you can download all of them and bring them all in. So now I have my Camtasia 2023, 2022, my work, and my YouTube libraries. So hopefully this little demonstration will give you enough information to decide if Camtasia 2023 is right for you. Drop a comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.